Mr. Bergeron's on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. So, Marilyn and I, I want to talk to them a little bit about money. Okay. Thank you very, very much. You're welcome. But I think that, once again, no, that's good. I've got one. So, the point is to figure that part out first, right? To figure that out with for yourself, for your, for your loved one, for your parents, to figure out if this, is, if this fits. Th this happens to be an amazing place. Um, actually, the reason why we came here was I was doing a series of presentations with folks from the Alzheimer's Association and Bay Path Elder Services up at the Hopkins and Senior Center, and the person who was actually the videographer from, the, from uh, Ho Hopkinton Cable said, you know, you really have to do one of these at Golden Pond. You really ought to go to Golden Pond, because that's one of the strange things about right, being in Hopkinton is that you know, it's like living near the Statue of Liberty, you know, and it's like, well, what's, you know, that's, what's that? That's nothing. Well, this is a big deal. This place is a big deal um, it, among assisted livings. But having said all that, so what about the money? What about the money? Here we got Frank and Mary, and they don't have a lot. They certainly don't feel like they've got a lot. They've got their home. They've got an IRA. They've got a total value of about $950,000. Their earnings are about um, $3,000 a month, and they know coming to Golden Pond, the chances are their monthly bill is going to be more than that. Right? So there's going to be some kind of burn rate regarding their money, and they're very concerned about running out of money. Suppose, for example, that their assisted living costs were about $6,000 a month. That's not an out outrageous sounding figure for an assisted living. Say it's $6,000 a month, right? And, or or $72,000 a year. And if, now, one of the things I always tell folks when you're thinking about assisted living, you know, I understand it's expensive, but don't forget what you're leaving behind in, in terms of bills. You're leaving behind most of your food bills, your tax bill, your insurance bill. You're coming here probably with your car, but you're not driving nearly as much because you don't need to drive a lot, right? Because a lot of the time you're spending here, right? So there's a whole bunch of costs that are going away. So suddenly your run rate on what it costs you to live here goes way down. So I'm assuming here, though, that you're still, Frank and Mary are still doing some stuff. You know, they're occasionally getting bored with the food and they're going out to eat or they're doing a trip. So they're spending about $1,000 a month, not nothing. Once again, there's no food bill now, right? Or no tax bill, but they're spending $1,000 a month. So say they're going to live on $84,000 um, a year, which is not nothing, right? So they've got income of $36,000 a year. And by the way, I'm just going to do one more parenthesis. There's a lot of math in this. There's a lot of math in this. Because the moral of the story is, once you've figured out if you want to live here, Go do the math, right? But don't necessarily do it yourself because you haven't ever had to figure this out before. Go talk to a fina your financial advisor, talk to your accountant, maybe talk to an elder law person. Figure out what your alternatives are with people who know the alternatives. Don't assume that your neighbor who said, oh, those are too expensive, really knows what he's talking about or she's talking about. So there's going to be a lot of math. So in this case, the burn rate is $48,000. If we assume, and at that rate of $48,000, and if we assumed that they had assets of just $300,000, which isn't like really a huge amount, because we're assuming here that they're not selling their house, right? Because we're figuring, as was just suggested, when you come here to begin with, don't sell your house right away, right? Leave your house there. Find out if this is really right, so you can, if you want to go back. So, at 300,000, if they were, if they were, um, if they had 300,000 dollars and they were depleting at that at the rate of 48,000 dollars a year, they could be here for 6.25 years. Now, once again, that assumes that they haven't sold their house. So let me talk about some of the extras, though, some of the ways that they could pay for some of that. The biggest one, if they are coming here. Uh, and they need, and one of them, either Frank or Mary, needs assistance with at least two of the activities of daily living. And the activities of daily living are uh, dressing, bathing, eating, toileting, and getting around. It's called transferring, getting around. If they need help with at least two of those, and if Frank or Mary, but most likely Frank in this case, that's the generation, 
had served in the military for a 90-day period in active duty, and at least one of those days, one day, America was at war, then he is entitled to something called the aid and attendance benefit, and so is his spouse if she needs the help. If he needs it, the benefit is about $2,000 a month. If she needs it, it's about $1,000 a month. So we're just going to talk about this for a few minutes. Um, so a surviving spouse is entitled to $1,130 a, a month. A veteran is actually entitled to up to $2,085 a month. Now, this benefit, if you are, the, the way the benefit works, the goal of the benefit is to basically try to subsidize the income of the veteran or the veteran spouse up to a particular amount. So if you're at home, if Frank and Mary are at home and they've got income of $3,000 a month, right? And the purpose of the benefit is to make sure that they're getting income of at least um, $2,000 a month for the veteran, they don't need the benefit. Except, except if you are in an assisted living facility and you need help with, the acti with at least two activities of daily living, and if, and if, and that's where I think one, what's one of the things that Jen and I would have to talk about, the, and if the services that you're getting are not a la carte services, but are in a package, are paid for in a package, then for, for better VA purposes, your entire assisted living bill in that case becomes a medical deduction. Therefore, dropping Frank and Mary's income in this case, if this place costs $6,000 a month and their income was $3,000, it drops their income to zero which means Frank would be entitled to the entire assisted living benefit. Now, by the way, once again, you have to, Frank would have to have been served in the military, in active duty, and at least one day had to be during a period of war. But note, for, for purposes of the benefit, when World War II ended, it ended the last day of 1946. Who, who knew that? We all, I all thought the war kind of ended like when the bombs were dropped in Hiroshima, you know, about mid-1945. So, and, and, and Korea, for their purposes, ended January 31st, 1955. I just had a client who was astounded to find out that he served during a period of war. He thought that war ended two years before that, right? And that therefore, he's going to be eligible for that benefit. Um, if you're a, you, you, you also are entitled to the benefit if you're a surviving spouse. That means you were married to the veteran at the time of death. There is this medical requirement, right? Uh, you can also receive this benefit to a more limited extent when you're at home, but I'm just focusing on it because you can get this maximum benefit if you're here in assisted living. And as I mentioned, the way to calculate the benefit, don't assume that you're not entitled to the benefit. Once again, don't have your neighbor say, oh, that's only good if you know, your income is lower than $2,000. The income, the way you calculate the veteran's benefit is you take income and you subtract the entire cost of assisted living if you meet that activities of daily living test. So in this case, if Frank and Mary's income were $3,000 a month and their assisted living costs were $6,000, for, for VA purposes, they've really got negative $3,000 a month, which means they're entitled to the entire assisted living benefit. Now, with assisted living, or with the, with the VA benefit, there is also an asset test. Frank and Mary need to show that they do not, ha that they have, in the absence of this benefit, insufficient money, using that burn rate, to last for the rest of their lives. There is a false, there is a myth that you cannot get the, this benefit unless you have less than $80,000 in assets. That is incorrect. Actually, there's a formula used to calculate this. There are folks that I could suggest that you talk to to allow you to figure this out. You can have more than that. To the extent that you have more than that, you can convert your assets into an income stream uh, by buying an annuity. In this case, that might make sense. Or you can give it away or you can give the money away. Right now, the veteran, the, the veteran, the aid and attendance benefit does not have a look back period regarding those kinds of gifts. So that there are a number of options that you have if you're a veteran. So 